Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening. Good morning, good morning. Okay, Patras and Kakuk. All right, let's start. Thank you all for joining us. This is another exciting panel discussion organized by the ARPA Institute. As you all may know, ARPA Institute has been working in Armenia for about 30 years. And uh, we have a few very important programs that are ongoing right now, but you can get details about our activities if you go to our website. It's arpainstitute.org. The most important activities are, the first one is we are now in the process of building a class 1000 clean room in the Alejandria National Lab. This is going to be a place where scientists can do very sensitive research in a very controlled environment. The second project is our science fairs, which we are working with the government of Armenia. This is to organize science fairs in every school of Armenia. Some of you may know that science fairs are project-based processes where each student or a team of students has its own project and they do research, do experimentation, present their research output and also make conclusions on based on their data. So they learn the scientific method. So we're trying to expand this year the process to as many schools in Armenia as possible. Last year, we had the first official science fair in Armenia. There were 44 participating teams. The winners, two of the winners actually, two teams participated for the first time in the International Science and Engineering Fair that is held every year in the US. And one of the teams won fourth place a $500 award, which was, I think, very good for the first participation. The third project is our annual invention competition, which is also ongoing. And you can advertise it as much as you can for all the young scientists in Armenia. They can all participate if they have an invention that is worth considering for an award. So these are our main activities, but we have others as well. We work with the universities and also the institutes of the Academy of Sciences in various areas. So uh, today we are very excited to have a very esteemed panel of experts in healthcare, especially digitization of healthcare that will be introduced by our Dr. Sarkis Sedragian. Sarkis is a researcher in the University of Southern California, and he has a very extensive background and also works with the, with the universities and, and uh, different uh, organizations in Armenia trying to help in this field. So Sarkis, without further ado, please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Dr. Panosian. Just before I start, uh... I'm having issues with my uh, video. Um, yeah, yeah, just one moment. I will try. Okay. Uh, thank you for the introduction, Dr. Panosian. So, and uh, um, hi, everybody. Good afternoon for those of uh, you joining uh, from the East Coast in the continental US. Good evening for those of you joining from Armenia. And uh, good morning here in California or the West Coast. Today's panel discussion is dedicated to the healthcare system in Armenia, as Dr. Panosian mentioned. And so I'm looking forward to having an engaging and interesting discussion with our panelists today. Um, since independence in 1991, the healthcare in Armenia underwent radical changes to transform out of the Soviet era centralized medical system into a more family-based family medicine and primary case uh, care-based model. So during the last three decades, Armenia has invested heavily on structure, 
building more hospitals, more high-tech equipment, and etc. But the quality of healthcare and affordability of healthcare is far below what is desirable for the Armenian citizens. And we know this. In fact, Armenia has the highest out-of-pocket spending in the world, with 84% of the healthcare dollars coming from out-of-pocket of patients or their families, and high mortality rates for those conditions and diseases that can easily be mitigated if we are able to develop a better quality healthcare system that is based on the philosophy of cooperation and has adequate quality assurance measures in place. With so many decades long problems still facing the Armenian healthcare system, the healthcare industry on a global scale now is entering new era, the era of digital innovation and the use of digital technologies in healthcare is completely reshaping the landscape on how healthcare is delivered, how patient or consumer data is shared among providers and how decisions are made about treatment plans and healthcare outcomes. So Armenia facing, is facing a new challenge that is to design and implement a digital health strategy that serves the best interest and well-being of the Armenian citizens, facilitates access to healthcare by lowering the operational cost and improving efficiency, and has the potential to transform Armenia into an important regional player, or why not a global player in the digital healthcare market? How can Armenia achieve all of this? And what are the opportunities and challenges facing Armenia? To answer some of these questions, the ARCA Institute is featuring um, doctors Armine Legian, David Sarkisian, Arsen Megikian, and Avet Manukian. Our objective today is to foster a discussion that will highlight the specific needs and paths on how Armenia can develop a strong and competitive digital healthcare ecosystem and may remain competitive in the world market. So without further ado, let me now introduce our uh, uh, specialists, our speakers, and we are honored to have them today. Dr. Armine Lulejian is a Senior Director of Educational Initiatives of the MESH Academy and Clinical Assistant Professor in Medical Education at the Keck School of Medicine of USC. She has spearheaded the doctoral and master's training programs in biomedical informatics, has developed and redesigned training programs, and developed over 20 new courses. Dr. Lulejian has the lead researcher was the lead researcher on patient and provider surveys with the first community electronic health project in the United States at New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. She has researched in the West Los Angeles Veterans Administration and UCLA Center for Health Policy Research. She has doctor of education and masters in education from Columbia University Teachers College and MPH in epidemiology from UCLA and bachelor's in psychobiology with minor in Near Eastern Studies at UCLA. Dr. David Sarkisian, our next panelist, is a principal statistician in the Translational Medicine and Early Development Statistics Group at JNJ, a researcher at the Cardiovascular Institute of New Jersey uh, School of Rutgers, and currently completing his doctoral in pharmaceutics at Rutgers School of Pharmacy. Dr. Sarkisian, earned his MS degree in 2011 from Statistics Department at Rutgers University. His main areas of interest are drug development, epidemiological research, advanced statistical techniques, including multidimensional data analysis and machine learning, genomics and epigen epigenomics data analysis, and visualization and studying the role of microbiome in modulating human immune system. Our next panelist, Dr. Arsen Mekikian, is a professor of medicine at Sorbonne University and specialist of autoimmune diseases with main interest in systemic sclerosis psychopathology, physiopathology, sorry. He has a lab on the crosstalk of B and T lymphocytes and is the president of Minhamon, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this correctly, and Vexus which are specialized on management and research of immunohematological diseases. And lastly, we have Dr. Avet Manukian is the executive director of the National eHealth Operator and the founder of Silex SA in Switzerland. He has 25 years of experience in 
architecting and developing enterprise solutions and massive scale technology systems for national level, meaning the government, e-health, credit bureaus, court automation, and for insurance carriers. Mr. Manukian has also patented algorithms for processing of digital signals. Um, he has a PhD in computer data sciences from the National Polytechnic University of Armenia. He also has medical informatics credentials from uh, Erasmus University in Rotterdam, medical expert system research program certificate from National Technical University of Athens and has been a lecturer in National Polytechnic University of Armenia. So I would like to start off by giving five minutes to each of you, our panelists, to introduce your vision on how to modernize the Armenian healthcare system in, in the 21st century. And we can start off, um, Armenia, with you, please. Do you have access to share your, perfect. You're mute, you're mute, Armine. I'm so sorry. Okay, I was just giving a talk to myself. Okay, so uh, thank you for that. Thank you for the generous introduction. It's very exciting to be here and it's, ex it's very exciting to be um, uh, in a panel with this amazing esteemed colleagues. So um, I, I made few slides, but um, some of my slides are really intended to be introductory slides in terms of electronic health records, because um, I, I believe we'll be talking a bit about that. So uh, with that, I'll begin. Okay, so as we know, um, e-health is a driving factor in healthcare everywhere, and uh, primarily because of electronic health records and um, electronic health records basically are transforming healthcare in insane ways, especially because of COVID as we speak. Um, healthcare informaticians, which I'll talk about in a little bit, basically take the data from electronic health records and turn it to information and then generate knowledge. In Armenia, um, we have ARMED um, that Avet will be talking about, but we have seen exponential increase in use of electronic health records. And in Armenia, it will be ARMED, right? Because of the COVID pandemic. So I wanted to differentiate between electronic medical records and electronic health records. So in essence, I'm not going to go through all of these if you can give it a quick read so I can stay within my time limit. But EMRs, when we, people talk about EMRs, basically what it is, is a digital version of a paper chart, right? So to me, that is the first step in getting um, um, modernizing healthcare. So you basically take the paper record and you digitize it to an electronic health record. And that's great, but that doesn't uh, that that doesn't, in essence, uh, solve um, um, healthcare or or you know um, give us great solutions that can be implemented. What we have is, or what we should strive for, is electronic health records. And basically, electronic health records are beyond what an EMR is, which is a digitized version of a paper record. So it focuses on the patient. You can design it in such a way that it goes beyond. Um, uh, beyond the paper record and beyond just data gathering mechanism. So what do electronic health records do? They uh, improve efficiency, improve pr productivity, they improve quality of care, and they, um, they increase patient safety. Um, they, I mean, outside of the initial implementation, they, um, they generate great financial savings, they have lots of technological advances, and then, um, um, you know, they can help with coordinating care. Uh, one important thing when we talk about electronic health records or digitizing healthcare um, records is interoperability. And basically, simply put, interoperability is the way all of our systems talk to each other. So if a hospital has a digitalized or computerized electronic system that stays within the hospital and doesn't talk to other hospitals, 
So if we are implementing RMIT, for instance, right, then RMIT is everywhere. And so now we don't have the interoperability issue because we have one system that basically can talk to anybody. So in essence, I show up in, um, in, in, in village of Ararat, right, in Ararat region, um, and then I show up, end up in a hospital in Yerevan, they will have access to my health record because interoperability is not an issue. And so hopefully that would that we be striving in, in Armenia. So to me, the opportunity in Armenia is great because it has great foundation. It has centralized healthcare system. Armenia has incredible technical talent that I'm just getting to know, by the way. And um, uh, we have seen recent global trends in health, in e-health and electronic health record use because of the pandemic. One of the very few things that, it, that is a positive with the pandemic. So what Armenia can do is leapfrog in the um, uh, the United States and, and Europe by learning from the mistakes of others. So we don't have to do this trial and error. We just leapfrog and just use best practices. But we can only do that if we position the country in a way that, that leads the way. So that said, um, I'm part of the Avetis Health Informatics Fellowship, and I'm going to give a very brief introduction. And this is my idea of how you know, our team is going to help in terms of modernizing healthcare. So uh, basically, our vision is that in 10 years, Armenia is training the world class healthcare informaticians to meet the demand for both local projects as well as companies and international um, global health for um, e health technology for the world. Our, go our goals for the first cohort um, are to demonstrate the value of healthcare informatics to both employers and the government. Um, our uh, trainees will be embedded in different uh, um, companies, including ARMED and also, Gov and also NIH and Ministry of Health of Republic of Armenia. We are creating a model for training others, for, for training health informaticians that I hope that everybody in Armenia or some people will replicate. And uh, in essence, training the first healthcare informaticians in Armenia. So the vision is that training four individuals uh, using a hybrid model. And then we're going to leverage existing talent and expertise in Armenia to teach, supplementing it by US expertise. Uh, planning to create a professional network for, uh, for, for all of our fellows to leverage throughout their career, but also establish a field and then write, you know, increase the profile for all of our fellows. Did I, did I go over the five minutes? I think I did. My apologies. That's all I have. It was perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Armina. Uh, I would like to uh, give the floor now to Avet Manukyan, please, for your five minutes. Hello, everyone. I also will try to share my, my screen for some presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 Uh, very short presentation about national ELF operator, uh, about fun functions which they do, which oper operator is doing, uh, obligations and uh, uh, achievements, current achievements. So this tool is created uh, by a request of. Uh, government of Armenia uh, based uh, on a requirement uh, specifications prepared by World Bank and uh, provided uh, by uh, Ericsson uh, Global Corporation. And uh, this is a timeline how the, uh, the system was implement implemented. 
So uh, as you see here, it started in 2013, development of the system and delivered in 2016. Uh, 2017, this, uh, by, a, uh, by a tendering procedure, uh, the company was selected to run the system by a concession agreement. And current numbers, <clears throat> uh, current numbers are, uh, here, here is the current numbers. Okay. Just sorry. So <clears throat> we have a little bit old numbers so about 500, more than 500 organizations which are connected to our, to our system currently. It's all hospitals, medical uh, polyclinics, uh, ambulator, ambulatories in the villages, uh, it's medical centers, it's uh, diagnostic centers, labs. Uh, so let's say, let's say in this way, except pharmacies, except uh, stomatological clinics, uh, <clears throat> I think 90, um, other, uh, the, the other organizations are left more, mainly are already in a system. They have login access, they have registered users, they have training uh, done. And the organizations which run their own EMR systems, they have integrations uh, through special interface. It's, uh, there are, we have two possibilities to integrate into API integration to our system. One is HL7 uh, CDA. Second one is a um, simplified uh, proprietary integration protocol. Uh, it's used in some cases. <clears throat> Uh, about population, we have records uh, for 2.9 uh, million uh, people currently in, in our system. This, uh, some of these records are like uh, big because they have big history, they have history of uh, visits uh, in, in that records. Some of these records are just a couple of, rec a couple of uh, records done by family doctors. But uh, we have all this data in our system. <clears throat> also, <clears throat> we are integrated to six insurance companies and state health insurance agency because uh, we are doing a billing uh, for uh, for uh, for the, for these organizations. Uh, usually, ARMET is used <clears throat> very effectively for interactions between different organizations, like let's say between polyclinics and hospitals for referring, referring a patient, between insurance companies and hospitals for uh, claim management and billing. Uh, and also ARMET is connected to, <coughs> to uh, let's, let's say almost all possible third parties uh, which provide any integration interface. So I will number it like uh, one is SPR, the, the main uh, integration uh, gateway for us, uh, tax department, Minister of Finance, uh, so-called ZACS, which is for death and birth certification, uh, registration uh, organization, uh, schools, data from schools, etc. So we are re really very well uh, connected to existing government <coughs> Uh, government uh, institutions. He, on the slide is the, is the list of, of organizations which is ARMET integrated to. Uh, so I will not go to, to this, this is like a big uh, presentation, but uh, in very, very uh, basic, uh, what we are covering, uh, what kind of services we are, we are covering. So first of all, we obliged to register all the visits which happens in medical organization. <clears throat> we uh, should standardize, uh, formalize uh, data which is uh, inputted by doctors concerning procedures or other manipulations done towards patient. Uh, we uh, handle referrals, do uh, electronic referrals and electronic prescriptions for med med medicine. Uh, but to, to finalize, uh, because it's linked, it's, it's a big one to finalize my, my talk. Uh, I will not say that everything are so, so beautiful uh, like I am presenting uh, to be practical. 
In 2020, there was a uh, law passed the Armenian parliament about mandatory use of electronic centralized national electronic healthcare records, uh, which, which uh, obliges all medical organization to send their data into the central system, but uh, uh, taking into account all uh, things which happen after that uh, with our country, uh, the government decree is not, is not still uh, uh, passed. So you need to, to have another uh, uh, government decree which shows how to implement that law. So the, the, this decree is not, uh, is not yet uh, ready released. So uh, currently not all organizations are submitting their data in, into ARMED. It's, uh, let's say this year, <coughs> We have about 11 million uh, visits. We are closing this year with 11 million visits. This is a huge number, but uh, taking into account uh, that COVID, all COVID-related activities uh, digitally recorded in our methods, I say 99.9%. Uh, that's why we have such numbers. And also we see like uh, how the that we see the increase of interest from all medical institutions uh, and they voluntarily starting to submit uh, their medical uh, data, their EMR data into the centralized system. So we have, we are, we have a very good trend. Uh, can, uh, also we have uh, this year uh, obligation to create these electronic certificates, QR codes for Armenian citizens to travel to different countries. And uh, we have now about 500,000 uh, uh, user accounts uh, who are using Armet on a very uh, frequent basis. Uh, and uh, they have mobile applications uh, under their own usernames, which uh, provides them a QR codes and they can uh, travel or they can show it to authorities. Uh, so this is uh, more or less what I want to say at the moment. Uh, th th this is a big thing. Uh, no, um, I will be ready to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Albert. Uh, that was great. Uh, let's, let's move on. And uh, I would like to give the floor now to uh, Arsene Metikian, please. Thank you. I don't have diapo, sorry, but I will uh, talk by without it, no problem. Uh, I will just introduce only some projects from uh, concrete projects from group, and we can discuss uh, after much more uh, levels of health. But uh, mostly the projects from uh, Santé Armini group, which I coordinate. The first one is uh, from the care for care is uh, telemedicine. Uh, health programs which are uh, connected by uh, professional platforms like Omnidoc and which are developed actually in uh, uh, several uh, specialties as dermatology, pediatric dermatology, as uh, rheumatological disease, as oncology, etc. etc. This telemedicine uh, French Armenian uh, uh, platforms will allow several months, several uh, probably years uh, after to have a, a representation for uh, a health data, which are all stocked uh, in, a, in a some level. The first point is um, the, uh, about the creation of the uh, Armenian registries. Uh, for the moment, we will very, very soon have the Armenian registry of uh, autoimmune disease and some hereditary disease like angioedema, etc., which will allow uh, several years uh, later to have a much more uh, data to implement in the uh, statistical ways, uh, health. Uh, uh, data uh, prevalences, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The second level is um, data which will be used from the uh, directly uh, departments, which are uh, which have an informatization for the patients' uh, recurrences, etc. Set and this project is uh, will go in our uh, Goris uh, French Armenian Hospital. Will uh, with a uh, cardiological department, with rehabilitation department, with uh, general medicine 
mobile departments and uh, in the future a general medicine uh, department which uh, all that are informatized the medical uh, filed patients filed will be informatized to have a representation of the various uh, problems or various uh, indications of medical consultations etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, the the um, the next levels of this uh, uh, health is the uh, creation of a data center. We have actually uh, created several months ago uh, a clinical research center at Yerevan, which is actually ongoing and which uh, help to participate to international registries for the moment. We also soon have a bio collection, a centralized bio collection, we hope in uh, several miles. And the next step will be a, a big data center. This big data center will uh, start with the next year with a master and license uh, from Sorbonne University and Armenian um, University with a master in France for epidemiological and big data uh, and IT uh, intelligence. And uh, this could uh, uh, provide few students which uh, will uh, after could uh, work in the data center as literally epidemiological and uh, big data specialist to use uh, the registries information to use uh, from uh, hospital information uh, 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 data to use it as big data epidemiological big data to better determine of course the patient's uh, ways the patient's uh, problems etc cetera, etc cetera. and the uh, last level is patient's level uh, we uh, actually have in France the programs which we created, which are allowed to patients to connect uh, by uh, web uh, platforms to be registrations and to regularly um, uh, implement it as uh, questions, as problems. It's very close from, uh, if some of you know, to spin uh, to spin model, which is a, a study from the Canadian International Group. This model will be also created, we hope, in several months for Armenian patients that, to allow to have a, a health uh, questionnaire for uh, centers, competent centers for a particular disease, uh, from some question which could be uh, uh, help for the medications, etc., etc. These are very uh, concrete and much. Uh, uh, much concrete uh, levels of uh, our health, but uh, which probably could also help to better organize much more uh, important levels uh, on the levels of uh, epidemiological big data, etc., etc. So it's for me. Thank you, Arsen. That was great. Uh, our last five minutes, uh, um, we will have Arsen. I uh, will have uh, David Sarkisian, please. Thank you, Sarkis, I'll be brief. Um, I just want to talk about uh, healthcare data from a statistician and data scientist, a researcher point of view. And so every time a patient goes to a doctor, uh, it's for their own benefit, of course, first and foremost. But the moment they step into that office, that patient becomes a, a data point, right? And that data point goes far beyond uh, just benefiting that single individual, right? Because what we want to really do is to, to understand the dynamics and the trends in populations. And this is how we can actually um, develop better methods, uh, remove deficiencies from the systems. And, and all that requires a very good quality of data and hopefully a large enough amount of data that you can do this type of analysis and, and trends, right? And so what needs to be implemented really to modernize the healthcare in, in any country and in Armenia specifically is to have uh, several key uh, parts to it working, right? Part number one, as Avet already presented, is, is already in place and working, and we hope it will only develop further. That is data collection, right? We don't want to see any more, uh, you know, paper cards or, or uh, data that is just kind of fractured and all over the place. One centralized data repository is, is the great start for this, right? Part number two is to have a, a very strong team of experts that can actually take that data and analyze it. And I'm not just talking about summary statistics, right? Just, just giving a, you know, overall report of a number of patients in this or that. I'm talking about really deep statistical analysis where you can take the population data and uh, 
analyze, for example, patient outcomes based on comorbidities that are recorded based on their demographics, medication, lab work. I mean, the, the amount of data is, is essentially endless, right? The, the amount of information that you can use for this type of analysis. And based on this, based on these results, you can then um, suggest certain changes, um, you know, in guidelines, in medical guidelines. And this is how it's, it's done in the uh, US in a group that I'm working with uh, at Cardiovascular Institute. You know, by, by analyzing and by publishing these results, we actually affect um, healthcare system downstream, right? It, it might lead to new guidelines, for example, for specific type of patients. It could tell us more about some very specific subpopulations of patients where things are not maybe the way the doctors intuitively think, right? Because the, the point of data-driven medicine is, is exactly that, right? Not to rely on your prior knowledge or your intuition, but to rely on actual facts derived from the data, right? And so, but, but for all of this to work together, it, it has to be a system in place that allows a researcher, for example, to go and uh, access the data, right? The, to request the data, to, to be able to publish the results without compromising uh, the patient's um, uh, personal data or, or um, health in any way, right? And so um, one way to think about it, and I think uh, Professor Chaldikian is also online today and, and he might talk about it a little bit more, is to maybe have an a, a independent committee that is connected to, um, to the Ministry of Health, connected to government agencies, but in essence is an independent working group that can develop standard operating procedures, can develop a, a group that, for example, may review a protocol that are being, uh, protocols that are being submitted for, for a research. And so in, in this setup, it will not really depend on an individual uh, that uh, that is currently elected to a, a, an official, you know, to a post, but it will it will work in conjunction with government agencies, but be uh, independent and free of politics, essentially, right? And so, again, the question of digitizing uh, Armenian healthcare is not a question of if; it's it's just a question of when. And and I think the faster we move the the better it is for everybody and especially for Armenian uh, people and for patients. And so uh, with that, I don't want to take too much time. As I said, maybe we should we should go to questions then. Thank you. Thank you, David, for that. Uh, it's amazing. We are we're, uh, we're good in time. Uh, so I would like to take uh, uh, the opportunity now. We have uh, Dr. Chaltikian here. Uh, I would like to invite him to say a few words uh, at this point, and then um, we'll go to the question and answer session. Uh, Dr. Chaltikian, the floor is yours, please. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, just let me know if you can hear me well. I hope so. Can you, can you hear me well? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So thanks a lot for this uh, kind of last second opportunity to talk. Uh, can I also show a couple of slides, Dr. Sedrakian? Would that be okay? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So I just wanted also to probably say a few words on this uh, initiative that we've been uh, working on in the past three years already that uh, resulted from a collaboration. We began working on it together with Professor Robert e. Stepanian of uh, Imperial College uh, London uh, back in 2019 and currently I'm also we're also joined by Dr. S.A. also from the United States and my name is Georgi Chaltikian. I'm currently professor and head of digital health masters in Germany and also head of digital health uh, masters the program that we're a double degree program that we're launching actually currently in Armenia in cooperation with this uh, same school in Germany and I'm also the founding president of uh, Armenian Association of uh, Telemedicine. So permit me just to present in a couple of words, literally this uh, initiative, what we thought about and why and how we're planning to implement it. Uh, just this, you know, few seconds uh, teaser video by Tim Cook, if 
just in case anyone has not yet uh, seen it. The world's biggest tech companies are getting into healthcare. If you zoom out into the future and you look back and you ask the question, what was Apple's greatest contribution to mankind? It will be about health. So yes, indeed, uh, this is what uh, Tim Cook says. Uh, Apple is looking into, you know, being recognized for nothing else, but, or primarily by its contribution to digital health. And we also know that uh, the, the um, McKinsey report uh, that has just been published uh, mentioned digital and health as number one and two priorities for Armenia. So obviously everybody understands that the digital transformation is uh, uh, perhaps the most revolutionary change to the health systems uh, worldwide that is going to change, not just the health of the societies, but the entire societies and the entire humankind. And that is why uh, all global regulators and other key actors such as WHO, ITU, European Commission, OECD and others are prioritizing digital health Digital health is being prioritized by national governments, such as, you know, with nations such as Israel or Finland or Estonia positioning themselves as upcoming uh, global leaders in digital health. And so, of course, the big tech. And there is already an uh, understanding that digital health is supposed to reach uh, the market size of one trillion uh, euro in the next uh, few years. And all that, of course, leads us to understand and to think that uh, why not Armenia and Armenians are probably also positioned to at least to aspire to be a global leader in uh, digital health. Just so we are on the same page, uh, this is how we understand the digital health with its all its components from digital health records and health information systems, which is basically the e-health part of the digital health, the one which is uh, high of it operated by Armed uh, in Armenia, but also including, of course, telehealth, uh, mobile health and digital therapeutics, digital imaging, XR robotics, sensors, uh, AL, healthcare analytics and artificial intelligence, and all the way to uh, precision medicine. So what uh, the idea is uh, that uh, we, um, uh, we would like to, we would like to, uh, uh, of course, to work uh, in cooperation with all interested stakeholders and all major players in Armenia, meaning not just Republic of Armenia, but of course also the diaspora, obviously, in uh, creating an environment and an ecosystem for development of digital health. And for that, we've gone, uh, we've done some preparation steps, um, uh, mainly uh, or namely, we we conducted a workshop with uh, a participation of ministerial representatives in uh, past August, in August uh, 2021 in Yerevan. We presented this to, to the government of Armenia and we also invited uh, basically all important stakeholders to participate in this uh, initiative. The initiative is uh, structured around the three main pillars, components, the uh, wellness operation, which, which is the implementation of digital health applications and services per se, the research and uh, development, including education uh, with uh, uh, the digital health masters that I've mentioned, is uh, already being launched at one of the universities in Armenia in collaboration with our school in Germany. And uh, no less importantly, creation of a business cluster in digital health uh, with promotion of digital health entrepreneurship and, entrepreneurship and uh, startups. And for that, uh, currently we are in the establishment phase of this initiative. Of course, the, the, the work has uh, essentially um, just began, the real work, and we are uh, uh, also inviting and we uh, suggested the government that there must be a digital health council, an independent strategic overseeing uh, board um, overseeing and promoting the development of this ecosystem with representation from all uh, public and uh, private uh, actors. And uh, uh, in addition to the council, then there, there should be uh, a, an executive center for developing this initiative, as well as foundation for attracting uh, investment. And as a, as a major output of this establishment uh, phase, uh, we um, suggest and we think of developing and adopting the detailed 
uh, national digital health uh, strategy in accordance, of course, with the recommendations by WHO and other global regulators based on the global experiences, case studies, and uh, input by uh, various experts, uh, including, of course, you, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, upon that, we think of uh, proceeding to the, uh, to the implementation phase. We think that initially there might be the so-called demonstration projects or demonstrator projects of various digital health services in Armenia, as well as at least one degree study program, at least, at least one large scale multinational research project and establishment of the startup incubator or accelerator. And we hope that if uh, all that uh, is, uh, uh, we, we are able to implement, then uh, by 2023, uh, the initiative may enter its um, basically growth and operation phase. So on that, uh, I, I would like to warmly welcome everybody uh, here in the room and respected panelists. And I would like to uh, you, ladies and gentlemen, to consider the to, to consider this uh, a short communication as a call call for collaboration, a call for action, and an invitation to join our efforts to find synergies and to think jointly and all together how we should promote and advance uh, digital health in Armenia, not just for the benefit of the uh, and for health of the population of Armenia, but. Uh, as a as a chance and in our opinion probably the only chance for armenia to develop economically to prosper to thrive and to make difference globally thank you very much for your attention thank you dr chaltikian and uh, i'd like to thank you all uh, our panelists for excellent uh, presentations Obviously, there are many interesting initiatives uh, currently uh, being undertaken to develop the uh, healthcare system in Armenia. And it's very encouraging and exciting uh, to bring them all uh, in this panel and talk about them. Obviously, the healthcare system is a, is a vast uh, ecosystem and we probably don't have enough time uh, during this session to discuss about everything. But hopefully we can touch upon uh, important points that uh, and uh, take on messages today at the end of the today's discussion that we can all go back and and start thinking and coming together and working together to to advance and help develop the Armenian healthcare uh, network and system. So uh, I would like to now uh, switch to a question and answer session. Um, I would like to thank you, thank also uh, our audience for uh, submitting uh, a lot of questions already, and we'll try to um, uh, address most of them, uh, uh, if not all of them. So thank you for that. So I want to start off by asking the um, following question. Obviously, the healthcare system in Armenia needs a lot of reform to be competitive in the in the 21st century world, and it's no doubt that the future of healthcare is going digital. And so um, my first question to all of you is, so how can Armenia be more competitive and success, su successful in that sphere? What is missing precisely in Armenia? What is one important thing that we shall all focus uh, to be able to put everything in the right place? or to at least start a um, uh, development phase and not fall behind um, developed countries such as uh, uh, you know, Germany and, and, and Israel who are uh, um, you know, uh, aiming to become pretty much uh, leaders in the digital health. health. Yes, Dr. Chaltikian. Yeah, if you permit me, uh, I think sure. and uh, that is actually something that has been demonstrated. You know, this is something that uh, many experts uh, talk about around the world. In our opinion, the first and the, probably the most important thing to, to, um, to start this journey, and the journey is going to be long, of course, it's not going to take us one or two years to reach to where, let's say, Israel or Germany are currently. Mm -hmm. But the beginning should be uh, the, the key to, to the beginning of the journey in our opinion. 
and we're absolutely convinced about that, lies in understanding and commitment to developing digital health in the highest levels of the leadership of the nation and the leadership of the country. Uh, so that should be, in our opinion, that is the first and the most important prerequisite. So those who are responsible for the strategic development of the nation should be well aware of the potential of digital health and they should be committed to that. Secondly, I would say we, we must achieve, and uh, this is what we've been actually working on. This is uh, our, one of our major, major, uh, major uh, idea, major thought. We need consolidation of all uh, stakeholders, of all players, all actors who are capable of contributing to development of digital health. Consolidation. It must be a joint effort, a joint idea, uh, a, a priority and if you wish an all armenian idea if we understand and we prioritize digital health then we must all uh, work towards that uh, development thank you thank you it sounds like we need to uh, revolutionize our philosophy of how we do medicine and healthcare in general uh dr legion i see your hand up please yes so um there's so much we can do in terms of healthcare reform in Armenia. One of the things that I caution about is, um, is coming up with scalable solutions that are actually uh, practical. So I, I would not go ahead and try to, um, to compete with Germany right now or any European country. I think, um, I, I think Armenia has an opportunity to, in essence, be the first in, simil in, in countries that are in similar uh, situation, right? in the in the post-soviet black I, I think I, I think that's where we can say we're the first one to do this right um i mean i i, I think I, I, if, if we're going to try to compete i think we should compete with countries that are similar in that low middle income um country profile as to armenia in terms of healthcare reform one of the important things that we've seen over and over again that that aids in the success of healthcare is policy. So it has to come from the top uh, down, right? So there needs to be policy about electronic health record use. There needs to be policies about how doctors are paid. Doctors should be paid, you know, what, you know, what the services they're providing, right? So then, so then like it decreases corruption, it decreases out-of-pocket payments. Uh, there needs to be a lot of private and governmental uh, partnerships. We see this with ARMED, right? It's working, but, um, um, you know, that's also important because, if the government is not stable, then at least you could have the private partnerships that carry through, right, any instabilities that may or may not occur. But also, I think an important aspect of it is the change in, in the psyche of how we train people, uh, what we focus on, right? So there's no reason why uh, medical schools or um, or any technical schools are not training healthcare technologists. Uh, there's no reason why medical schools should not be um, teaching doctors how to use electronic health records, even if it's a vision, if, even if it's not like something that's used in the hospital every day. But um, um, the, I mean, it's the, the important thing is to pick um, um, ideas or to pick projects that actually end up having results, right? So you can have outcomes and the outcomes uh, demonstrate the need, but also what can be done. I think that's more important. So in your presentation, you talked about electronic health, health records, um, the importance of, of it. Uh, what, what is the feasibility of um, bringing this up to speed in Armenia and having it make a difference? That's a really great question. Thanks, Sarkis. So, um, I, and, and, and Abed, please jump in. Um, so I, I think the important is, uh, the important, some important aspects include making sure all of our doctors buy in to this electronic health record. Like every single doctor should be drinking this Kool-Aid, so, so to speak, right? Everyone, every single doctor in Armenia should, should believe wholeheartedly that electronic health records are the future of healthcare, right? Yes, there are generational gaps, but there are also logistics, right? Every doctor should have access to a computer. 
but not only just have the computer, but also be able to use it, right? And be able to access the electronic health record. We should have electronic health records that are just promoted on the patient level, on the clinician level, on the government level, on the financial level, claims level. So, um, um, it, you know, an electronic health record implementation costs a lot at the forefront of implementation, but the benefit you see a few years down the road. Uh, I mean, I'll ask uh, to respond to Armin's request. Uh, I will bring, uh, there is two sides, pluses and minuses. Uh, pluses, uh, let's start from minuses. Uh, doctors see uh, to be contributing uh, data into electronic medical records and uh, at the end into electronic healthcare records, which is integrated electronic medical records on a national level. Doctors see several uh, minuses. They the intensive uh, incentivization, which is one of first one is a time. So they are losing time typing in or this information that they, they may uh, use more effectively. They, they, they think in that way, their time to, to cure a patient, to treat a patient. And the second thing is, which is also very, very important, is a transparency. Transparency is they incentivizing them. It's a minus for them uh, because the, I'm, I'm absolutely like open person and talking very directly what uh, we need to understand pro problems and, and address the problem and to, to solve it. So uh, this is another thing which uh, not all hospitals like to be transparent and open all their procedures so everything is done towards the patient in real time, which because I, our system is real time, to be reflected in a central electronic healthcare records. This is another thing. And plus is, uh, I think uh, I, all panelists and uh, people uh, have already mentioned that so many pluses when you have electronic health record like aggregated in you know, one place and every next doctor can see what happens with the patient uh, in, on a historical basis uh, with the previous uh, medical organization and see all the medical history to, to make the decisions. That's it. Thank you. Dr. Sarkisian. Yeah, and Sarkis, not doctor just yet. I have another year for it, so David is fine. <laughs> so um, I, I I don't view it as a competition at all. I don't think we need to compete with anybody, right? Because what 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 we are trying to do is really to build a modern healthcare system, and and so uh, you know being best or being uh, better than anybody else should be just a byproduct of being a professional in what we do, right? So. For me, the most important thing is to build an expertise, built in processes that allow for, you know, quick turnaround, quick access to data, you know, being able to make sense out of what we're collecting, right? Uh, and, and that's much more important than, you know, proving to anybody that, that we are good enough, right? This is first and foremost is for internal use in Armenia. But, you know, that, that's my subjective opinion. Thank you. And lastly, Dr. Chaltikian, please. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I would like to reflect uh, again on the, on the usage, usage of um, uh, health professionals of the electronic health record. Well, and we know we, we've talked about that with Avet and others uh, uh, quite a lot. For example, we have the institutions connected to Armen, right? But we still have a very, very insignificant proportion, probably uh, less than 1% of clinical data that is being entered into the uh, electronic medical record, into the electronic health records. Is that correct, the vetted? If, uh, if this is, if you have, uh, uh, I mean, if, if I'm not correct, please uh, feel free to correct me. Now, the question here is how do we make uh, clinicians, clinical people to change, if this is uh, to, to change essentially their culture because the digital is a digital transformation, first of all, uh, we have to consider the different layers in in digital uh, in this you know in um, establishing and promoting uh, digital health in health system. As uh, many experts say, there are several uh, layers. You know the the or the levels. The digitization is one thing. Digitalization is different, and digital transformation of health healthcare is yet different. And digital transformation deals a lot about culture change. It it is change of the culture when when clinicians. Uh, uh, should be thinking and doing digital. Now, how do we make clinicians do digital? Well, there are, of course, uh, a lot of challenges. It is uh, certainly a very challenging, uh, challenging area. If we remember the High Tech Act 
in the United States of America. Uh, that, uh, that initiative, you know, federal initiative, there's a lot of uh, American US doctors here. And I've, I've talked, I remember, you know, 10, 10 years, 12, uh, 12 years ago, talking to US doctors, complaining to me how they hate electronic health records and how they hate entering clinical data into electronic health records. And we know a lot of, a lot of problems with adoption of the EHR uh, technology uh, related to that, because the technology is unfortunately still uh, not perfect. It's far from perfect. Like, by the way, uh, the one thing that uh, uh, we are moving towards, I mean, the, it, it will be coming. Of course, new developments will be coming. The uh, Dr. Topol, uh, the one of the you know most prominent uh, experts in digital health, Eric Topol, he once said that the golden era of uh, electronic health records and of electronic health information systems uh, will come when we can get rid of this and this. Uh, I'm showing basically my keyboard and mouse, right? Uh, so th there's a lot to talk about. That the technology it has still has a lot of a lot of room for improvement. Because patients also do not appreciate, you know, coming seeing a doctor and a doctor talking to the screen of the computer for two thirds of the time or three quarters of the time out of the 15 minute slot and 15 minute appointment with the patient, right? So there is a lot about technology, but it is not only about technology. Why I have always advocated for top down approach in the e health component of digital health because consumer digital health is completely different. There, we're going to have the bottoms up approach. There will be startups, there will be patients eventually requiring and requesting the digital applications. Electronic uh, um, integrated health information system requires a top down approach. How that top down approach has been achieved in the United States by infusing 36 up to currently 36 billion dollars into the health system. And that is something, ladies and gentlemen, that resulted in the digitalization of the health system. When I suggested that a few years ago at one of the top uh, uh, top level uh, meeting in Germany, I said, why don't you guys do the same that Americans did? Because we know that it is the high tech act that, that shifted uh, during the five years, the number of fully digitalized hospitals or stage six, stage, stage seven, MRAM, uh, stage six, stage seven um, hospitals in the US from our hospitals with comprehensive electronic health record from less than, I guess it was 1% in 2009. I remember very clearly that paper in the New England Journal of Medicine. It was 1% in 2009. In 2017, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was already more than 90%. So it was that uh, high tech and the so-called meaningful use initiative. And what was the meaningful use initiative? It was basically, like I've just mentioned, a system of incentives and disincentives, carrot and stick. We pay money, additional money to the health institutions in order to be able in order to be motivated to enter clinical data into the EHR. And sometime later, we start penalizing them. And uh, the, the US that did exactly the same. Back, like I said, three years ago, four years ago, I told, uh, uh, asked my German colleagues, why you guys don't do the same? They said, you know, what was the answer? Well, uh, US is rich. We're not as rich as the US uh, to do that. Of course, it was ridiculous. And it, it proved to be ridiculous because three years later, Bundes, uh, Bundestag, uh, passed a law that is currently is going to infuse 4.5 billion euros in digitalizing the German health system. Now, this is the answer. Obviously, we understand that Armenia doesn't have uh, uh, 4 billion, nor, nor uh, neither uh, 36 billion, nor even 4 billion euros or dollars. That's fine. However, the system of incentives and disincentives to make doctors want to use uh, electronic clinical data is still absolutely imaginable, even with the uh, resources that uh, Armenia has. And then finally, about the, uh, you know, all these incentives, disincentives and culture, um, you know, as, as, as long as we see it and, and we, and we uh, there and we say, you know, you know, we have no money for that. Or we, have, we, we don't have this, we don't have that, nothing is going to move. We do not need to find justification for what we're not doing. Mm -hmm. We need to find means to do what we think is important and necessary to do. Thank you. Um, I think if I were to summarize, uh, we need to focus on the quality rather than the quantity. Uh, so we touched upon a few important points uh, uh, in this electronic health records. Uh, I, it's, it's a burden for the for the doctors or the healthcare professionals to spend the time and enter. And 
but also there is the other sector, the IT sector, that is responsible for providing this communication. And so uh, IT sector is basically one of the stakeholders in this ecosystem. Uh, um, and in the other issue with the electronic health records is patient privacy. And I'm resonating uh, actually questions coming from the audience. What is ARMED doing to, um, let me read out the question. What is ARMED doing uh, to, um, um, what processes uh, are being developed to ensure patient privacy, given the broad connectivity between medical charts and government agencies? This is a, actually a question coming from uh, Manushak Amzoyan uh, from the audience. I think it's uh, the right point to, to talk about this. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much. I think this uh, question addressed to me. I'll try to answer. Uh, privacy, patient privacy. Uh, let, let's start from security. Uh, this is not our not one, let's say number one or number, you cannot number the private, this is high priority for us because, you know, we are investing a lot in the privacy in constant basis, we have enemies next to us, we are trying to hack our databases and steal some medical data on a like daily basis and during the war it is like eight, like ten, ten folds more the attacks uh, hacking attacks we 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 have is ten ten times more but as uh, maybe as you know uh, none of the data is no leakage data leakage happens or uh, nobody can uh, steal any any medical data so we are constantly working on on uh, security uh, privacy we have uh, every citizen of Armenia with their electronic passport and PIN number can log in into the ARMED. This is like uh, open. Uh, this, this is called a high authorization level or whatever. And they see all the records they, we have about them in ARMED and they can uh, block the record. They can stop access to doctors. So there is a, uh, procedures which are very, very similar to HIPAA uh, because I mentioned that the system is developed by Ericsson Corporation, uh, and this company is working uh, in European market for a lo long uh, time uh, doing electronic systems. And uh, these uh, so functionalities are there uh, for, for patient protection. Uh, there's a lot of uh, security rules in place uh, protecting uh, medical data for, of patient from uh, uh, unsanctioned uh, uh, view or access, or either if some access happens, let's say it's called emergency access, if patient unconscious and they, they can they cannot he cannot give access or sign a consent form, still it's recorded in a logs lifelong. So if this uh, access and view of data is uh, uh, is uh, uh, is uh, not uh, allowed. It, it can have uh, criminal uh, consequences for the person who done this. So we are very, very uh, strict on this uh, pri patient pro privacy rules. We are very strict on uh, security things. And uh, and one more, uh, maybe okay. This is this is the, this is I hope the answer. I have something I want to tell, but maybe I'll wait uh, for later chance to say that. My follow-up question would be, so what, what measures are being implemented to raise awareness and increase the public trust in the system uh, to, to get acceptance, in other words, a better acceptance? Uh, COVID. COVID done this. Short answer. People, people feel the, uh, the need for this the digital data uh, during the COVID. When they need vaccination proofs, uh, they need tests to travel or to show to some, some authorities. And they start to understand uh, the importance of having their electronic data there. And we start to receive a lot of requests like, why we don't, we don't see our other lab tests there? Why only COVID tests we can see in our mobiles? This, this, this kind of request starts to uh, rise from just general people like population. And another request we start to uh, start receiving after this COVID things is why we don't see our uh, uh, radiological 
pictures like like you know in in the system they, they start to log into armed and they, they see a lot of records but no pictures no daikon pictures and say we don't we need the daikon picture to see and uh, let's say if uh, we have uh, uh, integrated some mammography uh, for example like a couple of hospitals include the integrated their, their radiological equipment Dicom server to our Dicom central Dicom server, and some of the uh, patients start to see this. So, uh, public awareness, uh, it's more, yeah, currently we don't have some campaign. The uh, Ministry of Health is not doing some campaign, but it's uh, done through like COVID disaster. <laughs> so, COVID, in a way, is helping transform the, uh, the system yes. uh, from within. Um, I see two hands. Uh, Dr. Chaltikian, please, if you have anything to add. Thank you very much. Yes, talking about uh, adoption, right? We, we, we speak here of adoption of the health information systems of the health uh, technologies by both professionals, the health uh, professionals and the, and the uh, citizens the public we're not even speaking of the patients now what what are the what, what's what's the way to raise um, uh, to to increase the adoption first and foremost uh in uh, my opinion if that and in, in, in that of many others we need also to raise awareness we need to share information we need to educate we need to show people both the health professionals and non-health professionals uh, we, we need to show them the importance and the potential of the health information technology. You know, with, in that regard, it's, it's um, uh, the, the uh, ladies and gentlemen, the audience, they, you, you might be interested to, to, to learn. For example, right now we're working on the WHO compendium of uh, guidelines, national, uh, you know, guidelines to member states, to national uh, governments, how to digitalize health information systems. Now, there's a chapter we, we're currently working on, and that chapter, of course, builds on the previous WHO compendium on um, e-health, the e-health um, action plan that was uh, published in 2012. Uh, back then in 2012, uh, we identified two major components of uh, e-health workforce, and those were health ICT workforce and health workforce. So basically people who, on the one hand, the, the, the key ICT, health ICT professionals, those who developed, develop, operate, and maintain health information systems, digital health information systems. And on the other hand, all others. Now, this year for the next compendium, we are adding the third component of capacity building, which is going to be the citizen, the empowered citizens, the, 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 the actual users of health information technology and of digital health. So the, the, the measures, it is hard to overemphasize the importance of uh, spreading the word, the importance of raising awareness, and importance of educating both health professionals and the, uh, the general, uh, uh, general uh, population, basically. And uh, in addition to that, I would like to also very briefly mention there was an excellent, uh, an excellent uh, question a little bit earlier in the chat about addressing um actually the the difficulties in or the social inequities in healthcare uh, massive and growing social inequities in healthcare and endemic corruption of Armenian's healthcare system well not talking about corruption now because otherwise it's going to take us significantly longer but the inequities here i would like to specifically mention a very important uh, uh challenge in digitalization and that is the digital divide and this is something that we should be also doing our best to avoid. Luckily, uh, with regards to Armenia, I think uh, the, the population of Armenia being comparatively, comparatively significantly more homogenous, uh, you know, in comparison to many other uh, bigger and much, much more diverse nations. So that is basically another prerequisite and another motivation of ours to uh, think that it must be relatively easier to promote and to, to move forward with digital health in Armenia. We have significantly less diversity. We, all, we have almost no minorities. Of course, we still have a lot of, uh, a lot of disparity between, let's say, urban and rural uh, areas and so on and so forth. Disparity is still there. Inequity and inequality is still there. And this digital divide uh, if we do not address the importance this, of digital divide, 
we may as well create a situation when we add, in fact, inequality uh, to the to the table and not uh, not uh, gap it. However, the experience shows, and we think that when uh, addressing in a proper manner these uh, issues, trying our best to avoid creating or exacerbating this digital divide, we have we we are we should be able, in fact, to address the inequalities to decrease the inequalities. And of course, also uh, the digital health and e-health is uh, among the major, uh, major factors of fight against corruption. This is a known fact that digitalization uh, of uh, health systems is an important factor uh, of uh, you know, uh, tackling uh, corruption in healthcare uh, as, uh, as such. Sarkis, you're muted. Okay, sorry about that. Thanks, thanks for that, Dr. Chaltik. And uh, my, my next question was actually going to be about uh, corruption uh, in Armenia. We know it's, it's, uh, uh, it's in different spheres of uh, uh, life in Armenia, in, in healthcare and other sectors. So uh, thanks for bringing up that point. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, digitization of the system is going to fight corruption. How big of an issue is it uh, exactly? And uh, um, how is the digitization going to, to improve that situation? What, are, what, what specific aspects of it are going to change that? Uh, obviously, uh, we talked about change of culture. But uh, if you could uh, elaborate a little bit more and uh, any other panelists who want to chime in, please. I'm sorry, Sarkis, was that a question to me or I think, I think, uh, well, David had, a, uh, yeah, Armina, you also had. Your... I, you know, so, so, so electronic health records or digital, the digitalization, I, we shouldn't really talk about that because to, to me, when we talk about digitalization, it sounds to me we're taking paper records, implementing it into, into a computerized medical record and that should not be the old. That, that is digitization, I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. That's the difference between yes. digitization and digitalization and digital transformation. Yes, sorry. okay, yeah, I understand. But but I think I think our goal should be to, to implement into a, you know, just just not having a computerized record. So I I mean I I think we should change the conversation. But electronic health records themselves in the United States, like you know, have helped with um, uh, with uh, you know medical um, fraud uh, detection. And uh, you know, if you incentivize things right or de incentivize things. Uh, payment mechanisms and um, uh, you know patient care aspects of um, of, of healthcare, then then you, then you you can make good strides in that. However, I I I almost feel like we're talking about a you know a topic that's taking us away from this. I think like I you know I like to really believe that corruption is not going to be a, you know a big issue in healthcare in ten years from Armenia. You know, ten years down the road in Armenia, I I really like to to approach this from rosy um, uh, by by wearing rosy glasses, right? And 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 just really, I want to focus on what are we going to do right now that's going to help us in getting there. And so, just focusing on corruption is not, I feel like the the, the right approach. I could be the lone wolf here. My, my, my question was not to focus on corruption, but how is uh, uh, digital health, transformation to digital health going to uh, eradicate corruption, in other words? Well, you, you, I mean, you can use claims data, right? So you can use claim da claims data, you can use payment structures, you can, like in the United States, one of the things we've done is look at you know, not surprisingly, like the same procedure is being charged a lot more in places like New York City versus rural Kansas or Texas, right? So, you know, like if, if the doctors are performing the same procedure, right? Like, why is it costing more? Like, assuming that you're taking um, into account the local, you know, the, 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 the differences in 
in, in, in the local issues related to, you know, um, rent and what and, and, and payments for for physicians. So I mean, in similar ways, you know, you, I mean, once you have data, it's easier to see trends, right? So you look at trending. Thanks for that. I want to change gears a little bit and uh, talk about uh, how the collected healthcare data can be used in in research and uh, uh, development. So uh, uh, some of you have touched upon this, but how accessible is the collected data for research uh, or, or to researchers in Armenia, as well as uh, you know collaborators abroad? Uh, are there any standard procedures? Uh, that are in place uh, uh, for researchers to ask for this data. I think, uh, uh, who should the researcher contact you, right? Uh, are there are there institutional review boards um, like we have uh, in the States and other you know, developed countries? Uh, do we have a system in place? How is ARMED uh, positioned to uh, address some of these questions which are important for the development of the uh, um, you know, uh, medical research in the country. Uh, I, I'll try to answer this question. Uh, we definitely have a, has a lack of uh, organizational uh, initiative here. So we don't have such a uh, mechanism at the moment, how researchers can come uh, and uh, get access to, to the data, which is already collected and systematized. And uh, because we are we currently we have uh, very strict laws which disables the, this kind of initiative, so we definitely need uh, to organize uh, to 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 make an initi initiative uh, and st and make a strict rules uh, how uh, this uh, can be uh, can be done. Because I understand the importance of uh, uh, such activity, uh, having researchers to dig into data. And because we are uh, the, the, we are collecting more and more data, we are collecting more and more structured data, which can be very interesting for researchers. And we're doing it on a vertical and horizontal basis. So if patient is in one hospital and move to another hospital or another polyclinic, at the end, all the data is aggregated in one center. Jeudi, Arsene, do you mind? Yes. Uh, so this is this is the answer. We need to work on this. We don't have a state mechanism how give access to, uh, uh, to to our data, which is collected. And another another thing I want to add here is structure. We want we work on a different registries to structure a collected data. I will number them. Like we work on a cancer registry, we have it ready based on WHO standards. We collaborate with lots of professors. If and ready to work with more. We uh, work on a stroke registry, endocrinology registry, psychiatry registry. So these are the several of registries which we work and uh, aggregate in, in the same. When I say registry, it's, it's, it's uh, something which work, uh, which sits on, on the top of EHR. So this is not a separate registry. Uh, the word separate is very bad because if you separate something, you miss data. Yeah, so we, we uh, synchronize everything in, uh, and to work on one electronic healthcare uh, data, but standardize them to be uh, interesting for researchers, not just have a free text. If you enter and you don't know what to do, but it's now it's structured, standardized, uh, based on international uh, best practices. But here we need, uh, when I say we, I mean, I mean also a government, and uh, needs a lot of uh, support and help of specialists for different areas to come into and to help uh, in the right way to, to standardize, structureize data, to make policies, how to access the data of researchers, et cetera, et cetera. So we definitely need uh, 
your help. Uh, and I, I have to say that, uh, Dr. Child, Professor Chaldikian, uh, uh, any uh, you, he, you uh, like his help and his support is very significant. He is doing a lot of job, a lot of efforts, and but everyone is uh, I think is uh, okay invited to 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 work on on this like we do, do joint efforts. We need these joint efforts from from Armenian uh, professional community. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, obviously, government is one of the stakeholders and uh, important player in this. And I want to take the opportunity to recognize we have uh, Ara Babloyan, Dr. Ara Babloyan, uh, former Ministry of Health in our audience, and. Uh, uh, would like to see more uh, engagement from the government in this kind of discussions uh, and uh, in the future. And hopefully, as we as we grow as a community and discussing this kind of issues, uh, prioritizing the goals for Armenia in the healthcare, we can move faster. I see a couple of hands. Uh, uh, Dr. Chaltikian, do you want to add something? Yes, uh, very quick. I just wanted to say that uh, yeah, indeed, uh, thank you, thank you, Alet, for uh, pointing uh, to to that deficiency that we still uh, that that we have currently in Armenia. Indeed, the policies and procedures and the the framework, both regulatory framework and also I would say also even technological framework for selecting, you know, transferring anonymized or pseudonymized clinical data. Uh, mining them out of the electronic health record and making them available for researchers. This is absolutely important. We, 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 that's, that is totally lacking currently in Armenia. And of course, I'm happy to say that that is a, a, one of the very important uh, aspects of the Armenian Dig Digital Health Initiative that we're working on. Of course, in our opinion, they must be even an independent, pretty much in the same way as we uh, advocate an independent digital health council that must not be even reporting to the minister of health because you know we we've kept saying that uh, digital health and digital health initiative is not going to be if we take it i mean if if we are to accept our vision this is not going to be something which which should be under the auspices of the ministry of health uh, that is and that is why we have approached already five ministers five ministries as, as we say uh, i call it four plus one the ministries of health high tech industry, ec economics, education, science, and company, as well as the uh, high commissioner of uh, diaspora. It is because it is, it, it must be approached by the, essentially by the entire government. Now about the research, pretty much the same way as the Digital Health Council, uh, we suggest also establishing an independent body that must be overseeing um, basically um, the, the database and the the ecosystem of pseudonymized or anonymized research data. This is going to be something very similar to what the European Union is currently doing. There is a, there is an initiative in the entire European Union right now, which attempts to bring together uh, anonymized uh, health data, and they call it European health data space, a common European health data space. Unless we're able to tap the potential of the digital health data for research and development, all of that will essentially have uh, make no sense. Thank you. Uh, David, did you want to add something to that? No, thank you. I think everything I wanted to say was addressed already. Perfect. Dr. McKinnon? Thank you, Farkis. Uh, I think the, uh, there is two important issues. The first one is that uh, actually we uh, we really have from the diaspora to be much more coordinated because we have a lot of initiatives, but uh, we still uh, really really have a very uh, dispersion. So it's it's probably the important information for me to really have in our diaspora in world diaspora, which is very active. It's really probably a very good thing. And uh, the coordination is probably still uh, not sufficiently, clearly not sufficiently developed from our side. From Armenian side, 
we, we, we just have to see that uh, they are not very uh, much, that they have a lot of, lot of difficulties actually, and that the digitalization, digitalization is of course not a priority probably for this particular moment. And this, uh, this is the reason why I believe that we have to really organize the structures as we done for the Clinical Research Center, which is completely uh, subventioned by, our, by us, but also people which are working in this center, by people which are from France or formed by France. We have, in this particular moment of Armenia, where do, they don't have the possibility to have this uh, financial support, et cetera, for the digitalization, we have to organize the structures in Armenia which do the job. Uh, and this is really, in this moment, what I believe, we have to develop a data center, a big data center, which is completely organized by diaspora, of course, with Armenian colleagues, to really help the first steps and I clearly believe that uh, in the future, uh, we hope that this, this could be much more, uh, of course, developed, et cetera, et cetera. For instance, which is difficult for clinician as me, is that uh, patients don't have a real, real, even complete paper document field. And uh, of course, uh, don't have an electronic field. And these are, of course, the next steps, which are clearly very important because this is clearly a future to, uh, uh, to have patients which can have uh, uh, a, a document for different doctors, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for that. Um, we, have a, we have a question uh, from the audience, uh, from Ara asking, uh, is the system, uh, uh, I'm, I'm assuming this is referring to the RMET system, is the system built on a platform that allows easy integration and exchange of information, uh, uh, the, uh, which is the HLA7 platform, in theory was supposed to allow for portability of the information. Uh, I think uh, that was the question. Is, is the system able to integrate? I'm sorry, yes. I already answered it in the chat of it, but you take, yeah. take please take yes. that to, to, yes. to live as well. Yes, definitely. Sorry about that. Yeah, definitely system has integration uh, APIs. Like I mentioned, it's HL7 CDA and proprietary simplified API to integrate. We have experience uh, from Erebumi, from uh, Astrik, uh, from um, uh, Several, so I don't need to, to number all of them. So uh, many laboratories and hospitals already uh, integrated. So uh, we are, ARMET is here to support uh, uh, different ICT companies, like so the technological companies, to uh, develop and grow their products, their digital products, and uh, to make them work better and according to the international standards and synchronizing their products with the government uh, requirements. Uh, the, we, are, uh, we are in very good partnership with, uh, I, I will easily say, all uh, software companies in Armenia who are working in digital field. And this is my, uh, uh, let's say, strong recommendation for any, anyone who, who have some digital initiative, who have some initiative which is related to the digital medicine, uh, I, I ask them uh, very kindly to, to, to synchronize these initiatives uh, with our uh, company because we will really help them and make it uh, and make the efficiency of their job higher not to allow duplication of something which is already done uh, or already uh, doing by, by someone uh, to join these efforts effectively on the platform which we already, already have, on the data centers we already have. We have about two, uh, we have equipment, about more than $2 million is invested in this equipment, which is a completely redundant two data centers in Yerevan and Jumri. So a lot of technical and uh, infrastructural uh, problems are solved. Uh, so uh, uh, my, my, uh, I'm asking <laughs> to synchronize and to, to be more effective on, uh, on this platform. Um, so we are very open, very supportive. Uh, and uh, anyone uh, who will start to work uh, with us, you'll see what kind of positive impact uh, we bring to, to to the initiative and how fast it will it will move forward. 
Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chaltikian, I see your hand. Did you want to add something? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, uh, absolutely agree with Avet, of course, and um, uh, with this idea. I wanted to say that the exactly the exactly exact idea of having this, you know, digital health council, and for bringing together all the all the stakeholders, basically all interested actors. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, as we already said, that is the, one of the primary motivations of this initiative. And only it not unless unless we have something like that, you know, we have the the, the uh, common platform, we have the common umbrella, a council where everybody come and at least learn about who is doing what, and synchronize, like Avet says, and find yes. synergies rather than you know doing some isolated things in silos. Unless we have that, and 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 the best way to achieve that is to have you know this council where everybody will be represented. And the, the next steps, you know, also being the special body for certifying, for example, digital health technology, because eventually we should come to that, uh, to that level as well. So unless we have that, we, we will continue having a lot of, uh, you know, redundancies, we will continue having uh, desynchronization, and we will be dispersing our efforts, and we will essentially never achieve that uh, beautiful vision of you know that some some would uh, probably think um, a fairy tale but uh, we insist uh, that it is absolutely possible like you know like a famous uh, uh, teacher and uh, visionary Hans Rosling used to say Hans Rosling uh, be the global health you know global health specialist and the author of uh, factfulness one of the uh, world's best sellers uh, now already late, unfortunately, Hans Hosling of Karolinska. Seemingly impossible is possible. I think if we sit and just think that, you know, we are never able to reach the level of, you know, excellence that today has, uh, say, you know, Israel or Singapore or elsewhere, uh, well, we'll never be there. Obviously, nobody, everybody understands that it's not going to happen in, overnight. It's not going to happen in one or two years. But 10 years, 20 years from now, why not? At least we, if we have a vision and if, if we are able and willing to work, if we are able to and willing to work together synergistically and not isolated, not in silos, then I think nothing is impossible. I completely agree with Professor Chaldik and we definitely need such thing on a daily basis. We really have a lack of it. We have a lack of it and we, we need it. Thank you. I think uh, I would like to uh, bring our discussion uh, to, uh, to a concluding end. And so if we were to summarize, we really need to push forward with a lot of different initiatives. But importantly, uh, if I understand this correctly, we definitely need uh, to cooperate, create synergies between the different initiatives and have a clear vision uh, and develop processes that uh, would change the culture in the way we uh, interact with healthcare and also uh, improve the, uh, the healthcare outcomes and the research and development. So a lot of co cooperation needs to take place. And uh, of course, the diaspora is actively involved and it's encouraging to, to see so many of us in diaspora and in Armenia thinking about this important questions and uh, working towards uh, developing a better healthcare system for the Armenian citizens. Uh, I thank everyone for your participation. And uh, for, the, for the closing, uh, I would like to uh, give two or three minutes to each one of you for closing remarks, uh, concluding uh, thoughts and take home messages from our discussion today. Uh, let's start with uh, Dr. Dolegian, please. Sure. Uh, well, thank you so much for the invitation to participate in this uh, great discussion. I think this is a discussion that should possibly continue. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it can be focused on different areas of um, Armenia's um, emerging healthcare, healthcare market and how. Um, you know, we can collectively modernize or help modernize Armenia's healthcare. Um, I, to me, you know, I'm an educator at heart. So I think this goes back to 
how do we start training our future doctors? It should probably start, you know, in high school. Um, technical schools should have programs that can help us uh, with training health IT professionals that are very integral part of modernizing a healthcare system that um, that uses uh, electronic health records. And of course, teaching it or implementing teaching all kinds of um, necessary skills, including computer science, you know, data management, use of electronic health records, understanding of, you know, panel system management or clinical reminders for doctors um, at the uh, at the professional and medical schools. Thank you. Dr. McKinian, your last words, please. Yeah, just to say that uh, I'm really happy that there is such an initiative about this very, very important question. I also believe that uh, Armenia could be very, very uh, strong in this particular field with, of course, uh, the help of all uh, so much uh, important diaspora specialists. I'm not a specialist from my side in uh, digital uh, health, but I see a lot of uh, very, very strong candidates. So uh, just it's just a positive you know, issue because we all also time actually to uh, probably have some positive uh, issues. I think that's really the most important field in which Armenia could be uh, one day, I believe, really uh, a real a strong, uh, strong candidate and strong leader. So we have uh, just to, to really work all together. Thank you. Thank you again for this initiative. Thank you. Dr. Manukian. Uh, I will say thank you very much for, for uh, such event. And uh, I think this is very, very positive. And, uh, I hope this will be uh, this kind of events can happen more frequent, and uh, on some uh, time uh, on we will come to some action plans or what what should be done. Mm, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Sarkis. Yeah, I think there were a lot of very interesting, very important issues raised uh, here, and and I hope we're not going to lose momentum, right? Um, we should just push forward with, with all these ideas, hopefully unifying around, around something like the Dr. Chalti Kam proposed, right? Some sort of a committee and, and really inviting more and more experts. And, and more, maybe most importantly, is to work on developing local communities of experts, right? In biomedical field, with not just understanding of, of what they are doing, but with deep knowledge of, of their particular fields. And uh, uh, I think a group like this can really uh, can really boost um, boost that in Armenia. And hopefully, we can all participate as much as we can. Thank you, Sarkis. Excellent. And Dr. Chaltikian, if you may, please. Yes, sure. Um, well, first of all, I would like to thank again uh, um, uh, ARPA for organizing this uh, super interesting and, uh, in my opinion, very important panel. Uh, I hope uh, thanks personally to you and Sarkis, thanks for uh, allowing me basically to jump in at the last second to, to participate and uh, congratulations and uh, big thanks to all um, uh, panelists. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, echo actually what uh, Dr. McKinian has just said and, and, and other and panelists and uh, uh, David Sarkisian and uh, Dr. Lulejan and uh, Avet Manukian. I, uh, it is our belief, our strong belief that Armenia is capable of doing uh, better and doing, uh, doing uh, well, doing fine in digitalization of its healthcare system. And it is our strong belief that Armenia has the, um, uh, uh, that we have opportunity, that there are, uh, that it is possible for Armenia to develop in what we like to call the, you know, uh, health silicon, valley or uh, highlands or whatever of Caucasus uh, to develop into a nation which is known as the leader in uh, digital health, perhaps again in the mid to long term. With that regard, uh, I would like to stress to emphasize once again that the core idea of this initiative is to bring together, to align and to synchronize uh, all 
those who are interested in in working towards uh, you know making uh, you know, to, to making Armenia prosper, making Armenia thrive through digitalization of healthcare, through digital health, we're absolutely open. We're happy to engage and to uh, to work to collaborate with uh, all groups, all professionals uh, who are interested in the same. We are absolutely away from any uh, you know any groups, any politics. Any uh, other interests, we are just enthusiasts and professionals who think that this is super important for our nation, for the entire distributed nation of Armenians around the world, that this is super important for the Armenian states. And we think we, we do have some expertise and some knowledge on how to move it forward. But we need the, uh, the, the efforts and the support of the entire community globally in order to move that further please uh, help us push that agenda help us for example leverage our government our ministers to adopt that agenda uh, help us create that council help us uh, let's come together i'm absolutely sure that together we can do a lot and we can eventually achieve that vision thank you very much once again Thank you. I would like to take time the time again and thank you all our panelists for engaging an interesting discussion. Uh, hopefully we can organize more similar events in the future and cover many other topics that we haven't had time to to talk about today. And I hope that we were able to answer at least uh, if, uh, if not all, but partially to some of the questions from the audience. Uh, the chat has been active, uh, and I see that uh, we have uh, questions and answers uh, continuously rolling in the chat. That is great. Uh, thank you to all in the audience for uh, your patience and participation and attentively following us. Uh, the events that ARPA Institute is initiating this panel discussions and have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Sarkis. Thank you very much, everybody, especially the specialists, the panelists, the esteemed panelists. And we had a very good discussion. I think it was productive. We will organize next year a similar event, invite even more experts, and see if there is any, any uh, progress in, in this field and what else is needed to make it even a success story for Armenia. The ARPA Institute organizes such events often. Yeah, on January the 22nd, we have another panel discussion. This time it will be Artsakh in 2026, essentially trying to see what is the prediction for the situation of Artsakh after the five years of the Russian, uh, Russian uh, help. So you will be invited, you will receive the announcements, obviously. If we do not have your email, please send us your email at info at arpainstitute.org and we will send you the announcements that are upcoming. We will appreciate any donations so that we can try to do even more for Armenia. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.